Hello everyone, and happy Friday, and happy TGIF everyone. I'm Riley King, welcome to this Friday morning edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. I'm Riley King, let's get started with this edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. It's time to rise and jump and get this Friday off to a good start, so sit back, relax. And grab a good cup of coffee and enjoy the morning show with Riley King, where we have a little bit of everything for you in this program. So, let's begin. First up, CDC predicts weekly COVID-19 deaths could fall by 71%. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Voted into 1-800-FARMERS to get policy perks, like a home and auto bundle discount. I'm phoning in, just save 20%. Get your policy perks by calling 1-800-FARMERS. Go ahead, phone it in. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Into the coronavirus here in the U.S., a very good sign tonight. New cases dropping below 30,000 a day for the first time since last June. Tonight, 160 million Americans, 12 and older, with at least one shot now. That's about 57% everyone 12 and older and tonight several states now offering lotteries a chance at millions just to get vaccinated and scholarships for young people and the incentives appear to be working and tonight again the anger among some parents across this country over whether children should be wearing masks at school here's abc's Whit johnson tonight tonight dodgers stadium one of the largest vaccination sites closing down after giving out 430,000 shots a symbolic shift but Dr. Fauci insisting the country has to stay on track to meet President Biden's goal, 70% of adults getting one dose by July 4th. If we get to the president's goal, there will be enough protection in the community that I really don't foresee that there being the risk of a surge, provided we continue to get people vaccinated at the rate we have now. But across the country, a growing firestorm over masks. It is absolutely unjustified to use masks. In Florida, parents sounding off at the Palm Beach County School Board over its mask policy. Socially, emotionally, this is just not healthy for the children. Iowa's governor signing a law banning communities and schools from requiring masks, but some pushing back. In Virginia, nine-year-old Jack Nelson has cystic fibrosis. His mom says she was given no warning when the school dropped masks at recess. Not one child there is vaccinated. And nobody thought about the fact that there's this nine-year-old boy with a fatal lung disease on the playground with these children. And nobody thought to call me and ask if that was going to be okay. And that terrifies me. The district acknowledging the change was shared with staff, but saying our office had not yet shared it with parents. Tonight, a renewed push to vaccinate those 12 and older with huge incentives. Ohio seeing a 28% boost in vaccinations since announcing its Vax a Million lottery, a chance to win a million bucks or a college scholarship. I feel good knowing I'm going to be vaccinated, but... It's also a good feeling not going a million dollars. Now Maryland giving away $40,000 every day for 40 days with a grand prize of $400,000. And New York today announcing a Vax and Scratch lottery with prizes up to $5 million. So you have a one in nine chance of winning the lottery, uh, but you get the vaccine and you win. And David, Dr. Fauci making news on that variant from India today, saying he believes our vaccines will be effective against it, especially when it comes to protecting us from the most severe forms of illness like hospitalization and even death. David, that was encouraging. With thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. Okay, and there you go on that video and that rapport. Israel cabinet approves 
ceasefire with Hamas. Biden speaks. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Aficionado. I'm a fashionista. Sneakerhead. We're going to begin with the news of that ceasefire. Israel and Hamas agreeing to a ceasefire with no conditions after 11 days of a raging battle that cost hundreds of lives. That ceasefire is set to take effect within the hour now. President Biden talking with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu again late today. We knew yesterday President Biden told him in a call that he wanted to see a significant de-escalation in the Israeli operation. Moments ago, President Biden before the camera saying he supported Israel's right to defend itself, but also saying Israelis and Palestinians equally deserve to live safely and securely. Both sides inflicting damage until the end, an Israeli airstrike on a building in Gaza. The grief for a family at the funeral for an 11-year-old Palestinian girl killed in one of those airstrikes. Hamas claiming this video shows one of its anti-tank missiles striking a military bus. One person was wounded. A Hamas rocket heavily damaging a home in southern Israel. Bomb disposal teams on the scene. Of course, there is some caution tonight about all of this, as there often is, because both Israel and Hamas now saying that this ceasefire is contingent on attacks from both sides stopping and that this remains quiet overnight. So let's get right to ABC's Matt Cuppin live in Tel Aviv. And Matt, on the ground, you sense that this could be coming. There has been a notable de-escalation, David, over the past couple of days. Fewer Israeli airstrikes in Gaza with fewer casualties and fewer rockets landing in Israel. But for the first time in 11 days right now, there is absolute quiet here. And about 15 million Palestinians and Israelis living in this small patch of land hope that it stays this way and that this tenuous ceasefire holds. Tonight, after 11 days of bloody conflict... Hamas and Israel agreeing to a ceasefire. Hamas confirming a mutual and simultaneous ceasefire agreement was reached in the Gaza Strip. The Israeli Prime Minister's office releasing a statement heralding Israel's significant achievements in the operation. Both sides say the ceasefire is contingent on quiet overnight. The decision following days of intense international pressure to end the violence, especially from President Biden, who the White House said yesterday, told the Prime Minister in their fourth call in a week, he expected to see a significant de-escalation that day. And late today, President Biden expressing support. My conversation with President Netanyahu, I commended him for the decision to bring the current hostilities to a close within less than 11 days. At least 260 Palestinians killed in the West Bank and Gaza, over 3,300 wounded. 12 Israelis killed and about 350 wounded. Tonight, over 70,000 Palestinians in Gaza left homeless. And earlier today, Israeli airstrikes shaking Gaza, where they continue to bury their dead. This is the funeral for 11-year-old Dima Asila, her little body carried in on that litter. Her family telling our team in Gaza she was killed in an Israeli airstrike yesterday while getting food from a friend. Her mother, Dunya, kneeling, her eyes darkened by fatigue and grief with one last look at her beloved daughter. Later, Dunya holding on to what she has left, Dima's few toys, telling us her daughter had been so afraid of the bombings. Meanwhile, Hamas pounding Israel south with rockets. Israeli artillery deployed just off the border. All right, we got another one. We were at this artillery battery when the sirens began. Well, you can see the Iron Dome right behind us over there. You can see it right there. Those were the rockets that were coming in. Apparently, we just got the all clear. Sigal Ariely's home in the Israeli city of Ashkelon destroyed, but she and her son survived. She said she's had to run to her bomb shelter over 100 times the past 11 days, but this time was different. So I was in the shelter and he was in the house. How long did it take for you to realize that he's okay? And what, what were you thinking in those moments? Two seconds. Okay. I pushed the door out, I opened. He said, Mom, I'm fine. Calm down. Take a deep breath. What's that feeling like? Wow. He's okay, really. No other words. Bro. Seconds later, sirens again. We're going to go in here with Seagal. Everyone cramming into the darkness. It's really been something these last 11 days. Let's get right back to Matt. And Matt, you and I have covered these conflicts in the region before. We've also heard both sides caution in the same way before that the whole ceasefire hinges on what they see in the coming hours. Obviously, hope for quiet night ahead across the region. 
David, there is hope, but there are also questions. What are the parameters of this ceasefire, and what is the threshold for it to completely blow up? There are some very tense hours ahead here. David. All right, Matt Gutman and our team on the ground in Tel Aviv. Matt, thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we are going to switch gears now, and let's go into weather. And here's a look at the weather across the United States for this Friday. As you can see, we have some rain over here with a little bit of snow mixing in, and some rain around here as well. Some rain mix in snow here, snow up here as you can see, some snow here in Nevada, and big rain band all along here as well. Otherwise, the rest of the United States is nice and dry along this whole portion of the United States. Dry, a little bit of showers along here by the edge, but all around here is all dry, and some parts over here is dry as well. And that is a look at your weather across the United States for this Friday. And we are going to switch gears now. And... Let's take a look at this video. Billy Porter breaks a 14-year silence on living with HIV. Let's take a listen to that video right now. Now, to Poe star Billy Porter, breaking a 14-year-long silence and revealing that he's been living with HIV since 2007. Gio Benitez has the story. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Michael, good morning. Yeah, Billy is a friend to so many of us here at GMA, and we did not know this part of his story. Now he's telling it and saying this is what HIV positive looks like today. After 14 years, Billy Porter, star of the hit FX series Pose, an award-winning Broadway star, now breaking his silence about something he kept hidden for so long. February of 2007, I was diagnosed diabetic, type 2 hereditary. March, I was signing bankruptcy papers, and by June, I was HIV positive. Billy telling The Hollywood Reporter that shame was his silencer, keeping the secret from his beloved mother. The category is... Then came Pose and the iconic character of Pray Tell. He used Pray Tell as a proxy, speaking about it on GMA. I am old enough to have lived through the AIDS crisis, and, um, you know, I always thought in a survivor's guilt kind of way. Like, why did I survive? Why? Um, and when Pose came around and the character of Freytel um, presented itself in my life, I, I understood why. After shooting the final episode of Pose, he had a change of heart and called his mom. Well, I ripped the Band-Aid off and I just told her. And she said, I love you. I've always loved you. That will never change. Billy's story is another example that the stigma is still very much alive. Someone who was playing someone living with HIV on pose still felt so ashamed that they could not share their diagnosis. Support poured in immediately. Glad saying in a statement, it's time to end the stigma that people living with HIV face and to educate each other about HIV prevention and treatment. Oh, it's a, a pill a day for most people who are living with HIV. It's similar to, in terms of management, to diabetes, um, to high blood pressure. Now, Billy says, he's ready to move forward. It's time to look at some stuff so that I can grow up and move on and tell a different story. 
And we are all so proud of Billy for telling his story there. And we should tell you that the Department of Health and Human Services says about 1.2 million Americans are living with HIV right now, but one in seven don't even know it. And that is why testing is just so critical, Michael. Oh, wow. I mean, it's what a, a stunning story. statistic. I'm tell but his conversation with Tamron Hall yesterday? Yeah. Ooh. And I, and I, and I have to to stumble on the polls and I'm watching him, you know, go through the show and watching the show and he's talking to his mother on the show and realize he's telling his real life story yeah. through his art. Yeah. All right, well done by Billy Porter there. Mm -hmm. and, and we always wish him the best and love him here at GMA. Mm -hmm. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we are going to switch gears now and let's go into entertainment news. And in entertainment news, Friends Reunion trailer. Watch the cast laugh and cry on the iconic set. Let's take a look at that right now from Entertainment Tonight. Courtney still have her lines written on the table? We've literally just slipped right back. Oh. We regret. We have such a bond from this show. HBO Max just released the official trailer for the highly anticipated Friends reunion special. And all I gotta say is, could we be any more excited? Look at me! I'm Chandler! Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> The teaser for Friends The Reunion dropped Wednesday and features all your favorite friends. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and David Schwimmer. And they discuss everything from being cast on the show. The first table read, that's the first time I laid eyes on any of you. Everyone was so perfectly cast. I remember I went to the producer of the show I was on and he said, that show's not going to make you a star. <laughs> to whether or not Ross and Rachel were on a bike. But if time was what you needed just to gain a little perspective. <laughs> we were on the bike! Coffee house? You bet. <laughs> were Ross and Rachel on a bike? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they even threw it back to this iconic moment. What is Monica's Biggest pet peeve. Animals dressed as humans. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, they brought back the trivia game. What do I yep. do with that information now? But no word on whether there's a lightning round. The test is ready. Rachel wrote Ross a letter and demanded he read it before they got back together. How many pages was that letter? 18 pages! 18 pages. Front and back! Front and back is correct! Wait, wait, go on one more And get this. There's even a special appearance from Janice, played by Maggie Wheeler, who served up those three little words. Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Yeah, but she wasn't the only one to read a few famous one-liners from the show. This is from the one where everyone finds out. Lisa Kudrow, who played Phoebe on the hit sitcom, shared that gem and gushed over her co-stars. When I watch the episodes, I'm laughing out loud because you all make me laugh so hard. Basically, the whole trailer is just a feel-good stroll down memory lane. Where's the tissue box? No, but really, where are the tissues? It was an incredible time. We became the best friends. Yeah, I'm going to cry now. Fans got their first look at the reunion special, which airs Thursday, May 27th on HBO Max last week. The network also released a star-studded list of special guests that will be featured, like David Beckham, Justin Bieber, Mindy Kaling, Cindy Crawford, James Gordon, Lady Gaga, and BTS. I'm really excited. Former Friends guest stars Reese Witherspoon and Tom Selleck will also make appearances. 
Oh, my God, Richard. Hey. Monica Chandler. Hey, hey, hey. And it's pretty clear the cast is excited about it all. The cast is incredibly grateful and want to give back, you know, by doing this special. Courtney Cox recently shared this video to Instagram playing a cover of the Friends theme song. And Lisa Kudrow told ET this last year. I can't wait for it to happen. I mean, the six of us haven't been in a room together in front of people in 25 years, and only once a few years ago just privately for dinner. So, and we had a great time. So I can only imagine. It's going to be fun. I mean, it'll be really fun. Okay, and there you go. And that did it for this edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your Friday. And see you back here tomorrow for another edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. And see you back here later on today with more news coverage. Goodbye, everyone.